Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP laptop. This one is an HP Folio 9480M, also known as an HP EliteBook 9480M. And in this video I'm gonna go over how you can uh, service your laptop at home. And uh, It's really easy and you should be doing this every few years because they do get really hot on inside and the CPU, uh, Intel iCore 5, they do get a little over throttle and they bring down the speed on the CPU. Uh, or you might get sudden shutdown because of the overheating, so you might want to do this every few years. I'm going to show you on a step by step how to open it up, how to service, and how to put it back together from every screw that I'll be removing. I'm going to go over the tools that I'll be using for this video, and you can also purchase them. I'll leave the link in the video description so you can. And purchase your own. All right. First thing first, you're not gonna lose any files or anything by doing this. So pretty much we're just servicing them without formatting or anything like that. You want to power off the laptop. You want to flip it upside down, facing yourself the battery. And now I'm gonna go over the tools. Tool number one is an uh, workshop towel, one sheet of the workshop towel. You need a screwdriver set. I recommend you guys to grab the iFixit screwdriver set. At least the simple version. Well, the pro version they do include you with an opening tool tweezers and a whole bunch of other stuff but uh, for my budget i had to get a simple set you're going to be using a phillips number zero these are s2 class steel they are really tough and steel they will last you many years all right so with a phillips number zero and we're going to be using a torque screw i'll go in a bit which one it is for the opening tool, if you don't get the pro set, grab yourself a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. So this comes handy. You need a tweezers, a curved or straight tweezers. You need your favorite thermal paste. I'll be using Arctic MX4. You can use Arctic MX5, which are really great. Or you can go over the board and with a little crazy, go with a thermal grizzly cryonaut. But this is overkill, so I will not go with this one. You're not gonna see much difference it's just way too expensive all right with these two on hand the most important one i almost forgot is an alcohol isopropyl or isopropyl alcohol is very important it has to be 95 percent plus else do not use all right with all those on hand now we're going to get it started also you need a toothbrush used or new toothbrush to clean it up all right so first we're gonna remove the battery. To, by, for removing the battery, pull this trigger towards the left side, all the way towards the left side, and then slide the battery towards yourself about half a centimeter. And you simply wanna lift it up. With that one out of the way, we're gonna remove the left cover for the hard drives. By unscrewing this screw right here, Phillips, and this one right over here. These screws do have a C-lock on them on the other side, and the little spring to push them up, and the C-lock, will prevent it from coming out entirely. So pretty much you just have to loose them up. Do not yank them up. Once you loose them up, pull this cover about three or four millimeters all the way towards the left and lift up the left cover. You can go ahead and clean up the covers if you wish. All right, next we're gonna remove the cover on the top side by loosening up the screw on top of the case. Again, this is a long screw, it will not come out. It will have a seal lock and the one on the left side. Now we're gonna remove this screw right here, again with a C-lock, this screw right here. So one, two, and the third one is almost all the way to the other end. With this one, three remote, you just wanna flip it like a book, pamphlet, all the way towards the back of the laptop. Again, go ahead and clean up the dust mesh in here. And you're gonna see the fan and the heat sink right here, and they place the heat sink under this uh, metal bracket. I don't know why. If they had left it over on top, it would have been easy to do it. But now we're gonna go through the hassle, hassle of the removing the whole bracket. All right. Let's leave that one for now. You're gonna remove the mechanical drive by remove by loosening up these two screws and these two screws that hold the caddy. The caddy is a metal that holds the hard drive in place. So loosen up these four screws. All right, now what you want to do, this is very important, you want to lift up the hard drive, the back end, just enough when you see this clearance right in here, 
you don't want to bring it too much up otherwise you're going to break the contact and then you want to pull it backward just like that okay so because i don't know why in the picture it says pull it up you don't want to pull this jack up otherwise you're going to break the jack maybe you can pull it up oh yeah you can so yeah never mind so i didn't want to pull it upward because i didn't want to break this jack because the jack goes right through here so let's see you can have it this way all the way in there you can bring it up pull it up and it will disconnect from there but this adapter is for the SATA adapter so you can do either this one or bring it up and leave the adapter in there all right so we have removed this one now we're not going to disconnect the CMOS battery because we want to preserve the configuration for the BIOS so we're going to pull it up has a little adhesive on the bottom and bring it and put it right on the motherboard right there now we're going to remove untangle the Wi-Fi cables from here just rip this paper off tape untangle them go ahead and pop open the two wi-fi cables just bring them up they snapped on and untangle those and bring it all the way towards this big hole right there now we're going to grab our torque screw before we grab torque screw let's go ahead and loosen up this screw right here loosen that one up loosen the one right here by the battery Loosen up the one in here. These are the Phillips. They have a little spring to them. And they one right by the RAM. So loosen up this one, this one, this one, and that one over there. Now we're going to switch to a torque number, I believe it's number 8. Yep. So we're going to grab a torque number 8. And we're going to remove all the torque screw which is in here. There are two types of torque screws, the short ones and the big one. The long ones is an M2 times 5. The short one is an M2 times 3. 5 millimeters and 3 millimeters. So I'm going to start from this corner and go ahead and remove all of them. So it is really hard to mix, uh, mix them up. So follow me from here, go all the way to the side and then we're going to get to the inside. Go the one in the back, the one by the fan, at the back there is one more right there, there are two more in there, everything on the back row, the one in the corner, and there is one hidden right in here, don't forget this one, alright. Uh, there's like a three more in here. Well, right, now that we remove most of the long ones, now we're gonna go for the short screws. The short screws are the one in the front, and this one is long too, so it's a five. The one right under the battery, pretty much, are the short one. This one over here, the one in the front, and the one right there. There, and they will arrive by the hard drive right there. So remove those screws, and then you should be able to lift up this cover from the front end. There's a little lock in here, so lift it up from the hard drive side, bring it up, and you should release this little notch right there. Bring it up. You can remove these cables from here, bring it up like this. And so this is the bottom chassis. You can just put it to one side. And now we have access to the motherboard entirely. Now we see the fan and the heatsink. To remove the heatsink, all you need to do is to loosen up these screws right here. They have a seal lock with a Phillips number zero. Now we're gonna remove this screw by the fan right here. It has a seal lock. This screw is being removed from the top case. So go ahead and remove the heatsink. Lift it up from here. There we have it. I already replaced this, uh, repaced it before. Now we're gonna remove the fan. We already removed this one, lift up the fan. And for the jack, to remove the jack, put your fingers at the back of the jack right here, by beside the jack, and pull it out. You don't wanna yank on the cable, you just wanna grab, pinch it, and pull it back. So, this is what I'm doing. Grab it from the corners and just pull it backward. 
uh, take the fan outside with a toothbrush clean it, blow some dry air in here compressed air i put the link for a good compressed air now again the same thing with the heat sink clean it up really nicely with a toothbrush and if, if you want to wash it and dry it out really nicely so let's go ahead and clean up the cpu if you might have a really big huge thermal paste from the factory so you just want to clean everything up clean everything remember the thermal paste is not conductive so you can just swipe on top nicely like that and clean up the heat sink nicely all right now what you want to do you want to grab your thermal paste any one that you want whatever brand and make a tiny line on the big die and one tiny drop on the small die right there next all you need to do is to first put the fan in place before you put the fan in place put the cable in it's easier just slide it back in there align the fan right there and bring the heat sink inside here first once you put it down do not lift it up again follow the numbers one two three four is like a cross screwing them you can go three four two one doesn't matter as long as you cross screw them so the thermal paste evenly spreads around the cpu so and tighten up this screw nicely and then tighten up the screw for the fan and pretty much we are down down here you want to grab your chassis on the bottom you go ahead and clean it up if yours is dirty pass through this hole all the wi-fi uh, connectors right there bring it right through there now first you want to put this notch right in there first and then let go of the rest and put it down now i'm gonna run these cables one by one through these gaps in here organize them nicely bring these ones here Okay, this one comes with the other one. So pretty much you have to organize this one. These two extra that you're not gonna use. Now I'm gonna use a tweezers to hold the jack, the connectors on the Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna push it down inside the jack. It has to make a slight flick on top, so you know it just popped in. So align it nicely and just push it down one by one. There are two connectors in there and be gentle with them. There we go. You just pretty much snap on type. Alright, once we have those in there, now we're gonna grab the hard drive first. And we're gonna put this uh, caddy adapter right on top. And we're gonna set it down right in there. We're gonna just put the screws for the caddy top straight okay and now we're gonna tighten up the screws for this ones that i be loosened up the phillips screws by the battery connector this one right over here and the one right over here now we're gonna switch to a Phillips to a torque number eight. We're gonna put the sh small screws right first. We're gonna put the one under the batteries. Mostly go under the battery only. I think they all go under the battery only. So put all the screws under the battery. All right. Now the rest of the screws torques go all over the place. Don't forget the one hidden ones. Put all of them. You shouldn't be left with any. If you're left with any one screw, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It's just a chassis holding the metal bracket in place, so it's not a big deal. You don't necessarily need all the screws, but it's good to have all of them in there. So put. You don't want to put the screw in here because there's no label. This goes from the cover. So put whatever you see a little label where it says screw hole. Pretty much wherever it says M M2 times 5, you want to put a screw right in there. And the last one should be down here. Alright. With all this 
set now you want to double check make sure everything is in place grab the bottom cover on the top side you want to close it down like a closing a book put it right in there make sure the hinge holds match and bring it down evenly and put it down and use a phillips screw for, that's the last bit we're going to switch we're going to tighten up the screws from one side to other tighten it up all right and this battery you can leave it there okay bring it to its own place put it there doesn't make any difference grab the side cover put it in an offset position down offset position with like a three four millimeters and then you want to slide it inward and tight put the screws nicely for this and the last thing would be to just grab the battery with an offset position like this and then slide it inward and that should be all and that's how you replace in the, or replace your HP Folio 94 ADM. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. If you like this video, click that like and subscribe to support the channel. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.